Right. Okay. So this is um, the first session of a series of sessions that um, are supposed um, to help us um, align and make sense of where we're headed in general as um, humanity. And then what that means for us individually and as a group, okay? So we want to we want to be very very aligned. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to mute um, um, all of you. Um, please unmute yourself if you want to say something. But that way the recording is uh, a bit more um, quiet. Um, okay. So. Um, <clears throat> this is a extremely wide topic, <laughs> of course, right? So what's the state of humanity? Where do we need to go? What's our role in it? And what's the role of our group? And this, in my view, has to start with individual. And there's a, there's a reason for that. And I wanna describe that reason by something that happened in uh, about, it, 200, 150 years ago in Europe. Um, so around the time of um, Goethe and Schiller, those um, poets and polymaths, it became clear in the sense that there was some feeling in the air that something was m about to massively change. At the time, Europe was dominated by um, monarchies. And somehow it was felt that that was fading away. But it wasn't clear where it was going. And it's a bit, in that sense, comparable to today. It's not clear where it's going. We know it's changing, but we don't know where it's going. And in the salons of um, Goethe, Schiller, and others, they pondered that question, what do we do with this? And they concluded that strong individuals would be needed. Grounded, strong individuals that were capable of navigating the uncertainty of that future. So far, so good. So then the next question, the next obvious question is, how do we get grounded and strong people? And their response was, let's have something that today, they called it differently, but today is a meditation retreat. Then 1848 happened. Um, and in Germany, uh, revolution and um, disruption. So that idea never happened in Germany. But the idea moved to Denmark. And the Danish people made it possible 150 years ago <clears throat> for 10% of the young population to spend, I think, up to half a year grounding themselves. So being in a thing they called Volksschule um, <clears throat> at a young adult age, around 18, without any obligations, just being, just having a space for exploration and understanding and um, learning and uh, exchange. It still happens today. And 10% <clears throat> of a population is sufficient for societal change. That's, um, the numbers are discussed and vary, but, uh, um, Apparently, somewhere between three and ten percent um, of the population are enough to shift um, a societal perspective. From Denmark, that moved to the other Nordic countries: so Norway, Finland, Sweden. They all did that, and still are doing that. It's all documented in um, Thomas Bjorkman's book uh, and Lena Andersen's book, uh, "The Nordic Secret." So the Nordic European Nordic countries um, 
are doing something fundamentally different from other countries. And that's that. Um, <clears throat> there, so it starts with the individual, right? You are better capable of navigating an un uncertain future if you are grounded. Now the question is, how did you get grounded? Um, and this, I would I would like to begin that that groundedness journey with um, Daniel Kahneman. Um, maybe you're aware of Daniel Kahneman. He's a, a social psychologist uh, from from Israel. He received a Nobel. Um, price for economics about 20 years ago or something. And he wrote a book about um, the findings that led to his um, Nobel Prize called Thinking Fast and Slow. And what he differentiates is system one and system two in our thinking. These are not located um, physiologically or not easy to locate physiologically. You could say, that system two is, 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 is part of the prefrontal cortex, but um, but let's not get distracted by that. System one is defined as the really fast responding part of your mind that allows you to catch a ball, that allows you to um, break in the street if a child runs into the street, that allows you to all sorts of things that are very, very quick. And the majority of your decisions in your day are led by system one. Our system two is the most metabolically expensive part of, of you. Um, and that's why your brain doesn't like using it. Your system two makes planning decisions, structuring decisions. It um, tries to make sense of the world. That's system two is what you think of when you think of me, of when you think I, me, yourself, usually. Now, the problem with that is that the configuration of your system one is more or less finished at a very early age, around seven. And the contents are not easily accessible. So in order to change our behavior in the world and change our actions in the world so that they align with something positive we want to create in the world, we somehow need to manage to We write the contents of our system one so that they fit our purpose. And that requires a bunch of things. That requires, first of all, that you're very, very clear about the positive thing you want to create, the world you want to create. That's a hard thing in itself. And we're going to explore how, how, how that can be achieved. Um, it's important to do that because that then allows you to define who you are in that world and what the actions are for that person in that world so that you can use that to, to um, refill your system one with new heuristics and ideas, but on your own terms not on the terms of the people that did that in, for you in the first place. Um, now, the, the next thing um, that needs to be done is to get some of the, get, get, get access to the contents of your system one. Now, that is, that is very hard because it's um, what we colloquially call our subconscious, right? It, it's, it's, it is exactly that. It's not accessible easily. So the next thing we need is a, is a tool to get access to that um, so that we can decide, okay, 
what are parts of that that I actually want and need and what are parts that I don't want that I can replace with new stuff. And that's an ongoing process. That's not something that um, um, ever ends. And another really important thing uh, I want to mention here is um, this all can be used for sinister causes if you are um, want to be a cult, right? <laughs> so if somebody ever comes to you and tells you to um, build a certain future and you have to rewrite your system one to be part of that certain of that of that specific future don't trust that person right? because that person is probably um going to use you for some personal purpose right that's so so it's crucially important that you come up with your own version of that good future crucially important right so so I will never, I, I will present my version, but I will never demand of you to accept that version. Um, but what I what I what I um, want to want to give you is an, an a way to get closer in your articulation of that of that desired future for yourself. Right. That's um, that's what we're that's what we're going to do, and I do this because I have a deep trust that. Um, our overlap between the between our futures is enormous, probably close to one hundred percent. Um, and so, okay, let's 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 stop here and for some questions and um or feedback, and then I would like to go into how how we do this. Kaswin, you want to start? <laughs> Not really. Uh, let me see, like how I, 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 I was still digesting all this. I'm still mm -hmm. digesting all them. So yeah. maybe if, if you have a question, you can pop it. Yeah. So um, first of all, I think it's absolutely fantastic because what you're talking about and the space we are offering each other. It's really of total freedom and this is amazing you know so when i was entering this project you know i thought okay i'm going to work with these guys and then we connected to kathleen and we connect to the farmers but it's much bigger than that and you are asking us for walking this unknown path but which is basically characterized by creating our own future a good future for ourselves and all the people we are touching along the journey and this is massive, really, I have goosebumps. Um, and thank you so, so much, you know, and I feel so motivated now to really write down how I envision my future. And I will rewrite the paper, you know, and Thomas asked me a few weeks ago to write my vision of motherland for the next three years. And I did it like in a very structured way, you know, because I come like from a very strong operational and project managing background. And I didn't dare to bring in how basically me as Diana, as a human being, how do I really envision it, you know? And now I feel so encouraged to write this down, you know, and thank you so much for creating this space. Um, it's, it's really fantastic. It's uh, thank you. Now I now I get what you were asking for, you know. I didn't get it at the at the beginning. I thought, what the fuck does he want? You know? Is he so ego driven that he wants me to align on paper with him? You know, why is he so brainy? <laughs> okay. I thank you so much. And um yeah. And I mean system cool. one and system two, and also thank you for um it made it clearer before you joined Catherine. We also talked a bit about Daniel Kahneman. So um, I had a little bit more information than you now. And uh, thank you for clarifying that uh, system one is like super, 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 super deeply subconscious. And I think this makes it easier. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. also, of course, uh, since we are like from Europe, you know, we have a very 
I think, European mm -hmm. view, Eurocentric mm -hmm. view on things. And I'm very curious later on, not today, mm -hmm. Catherine, um, yeah. about your experience and also what does it mean mm -hmm. for you to be grounded? You know, mm -hmm. do you have this word? You know, do you use it? Um, mm -hmm. Do you need it at all? So, mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think maybe if I may add, yeah, uh, uh, um, I also get goosebumps, just like Diana is saying. <laughs> it's a bit terrifying. And uh, I love uh, the way you've uh, put it, that in as much as your version is going to be there, it's not a must for us to follow your version. We can come up with, with our own version, you know, mm -hmm. our own version, not far away from your dream, our own version, far from your version, but with the same vision. Exactly. Yeah, so that that makes it that makes it a little easier. At least yes. uh, with the, the goosebumps will <laughs> fade. <laughs> I bet. I, I hope not. Um, but but uh, <laughs> let's let's have goosebumps and uh, um, <laughs> and okay. let's let's be that a motivation, right? Um, yeah. Uh, but okay. Um, and I, we're recording this so that um. All of us have the opportunity to also um, look or listen to that um, at a later point. And um, if any question comes up, come up later, then um, we're always here to to touch on them. Um, okay, so I'm going to go into process now. How how is that actually done? And <clears throat> um. What I, what I offer here is just process that has worked for me, um, but I know it has worked for many other people as well because I've um, helped guide many, many people through that process as well. Um, many meaning hundreds. So I, I, I know it's, it's, it can work. So the first thing to do is describe your dream future. And this can feel really weird and um, it should, in the first instance at least, um, be private. Right? This is something you write for yourself and you don't have to share it. You can share it, um, and, but it feels weird if you're really opening up about the dream of your future. And if you wanna get some inspiration of a really courageous guy who did that in 1932, you can search for Winston Churchill's uh, um, article called 50 Years Hence. So in 1932, he wrote down what he thinks, um, thought 1982 might look like. And he came up with the weirdest pictures. And in different shapes and forms, many of these pictures actually came true. That's different than, than, than from his pictures. For example, he was imagining... We're growing chicken parts in on, on shelves in cellars run by solar energy. But we're not actually that far away from that, right? Um, so <clears throat> what, what, I, what I can offer, and I'm going to share a link to that um, as well, is seven questions that reflect... 360 degrees of what humans do individually and in groups. Um, there is overlap, but if you answer each of those questions for yourself, you have a good chance that you've touched on a 360 degree view of the world. Why is that important? You might have an education in a uh, background in education and then it is very tempting to use education as the lever for looking at the world and changing the world and all of it. That's good and might be right. But you might be missing out on questions around where does the food come from? How do we get shelter, right? That's not automatically linked to education. Right? So, so we wanna at least look into all of these areas. The, the questions are very abstract and they're abstract on purpose. Um, 
I want to want to describe this with the with the second um, of these questions. Um, uh, the, the, the level of abstraction and also the reason for the abstraction. I'm gonna, the first one is pretty obvious. The first one is about supply. So how do we source stuff? How do we refine it into something usable? And how do we distribute it? And how do we do all of this in a regenerative way? And how do we do all of this in a way that we also create buffers for emergency situations and future generations. Right? So that's question number one. And um, here you can already see that this is you, you can you can answer this question by describing our current economic system if you like, right? Um, but you can also replace it with something else, right? This is why that question isn't, doesn't contain words like industry or companies or um, the economy, <laughs> but it's on a very abstract level so that you can really describe it how you would dream it up. And then I mean dream. So you just got a beautiful planet for your birthday and um, you can come up with the way the the human civilization will live on this planet. And once you're done describing that, you will get 8 billion people to do that. Okay, that's that's the frame of mind that you're in. Okay, question number two is about signaling, signaling capacity, right? So what does signaling capacity mean? Today, in at least half of the, roughly half of the countries in the world, we have two signals that we can send as an individual. One is by spending money. So spending money is a signal, right? We can buy this product and not that other product. And that's a signal of some sort. And we can sometimes vote. That's the second signal. <clears throat> and the reason why Again, this is so abstract, it's about signaling capacity. <laughs> Not about, okay, what forms of money do we use? Or do we use money? Or uh, I don't care, right? I really don't care. We can use money, we can, but we can also do it without. We can use votes, but we can also do it without. We can use all sorts of things. And I don't wanna say any things because I don't wanna create a bias, right? But there are many, many forms we can show the world and listen to the world and send and receive signals about what needs to be done or not be done. Okay, that's, the, that's what that question is about. The third question is about governance, right? So how does it happen that we come up with rules for ourselves, for societies, locally, regionally, and globally? How does it happen? How is that authorized? And how is that enforced? Right. Again, detach from any way we do this right now. Because if you start looking into the actual original forms of democracy in ancient Athens, you'll be surprised. They did not vote. They were chosen by a lottery. There was no voting. And that's so so that's that breaks our concepts of democracy, right? Maybe we can think about democracy in a different way. And that, that's okay, governance. Then how do we manage knowledge? Like what is that actually? How do we agree on? What is knowledge and what is not knowledge? Are there maybe different dimensions to that? Right. Uh, and then how do we spread it? How do we spread it in a way that it maintains integrity across time and space? Huge questions, I know, but um, very helpful to think about that. 
Next question is, how do we relate to people? Right. Um, currently, we put ourselves into groups. Uh, we call those groups families or governments or companies or whatever. Um, might be cool, might be useful, but it also might not. So let's find that out, right? So let's, let's see how we put ourselves into relationship with other people and why and how's that done. Next one is about nurturing the body. So how do we create healthy bodies? How do we maintain that health? And how do we restore it if it breaks down? And the final question is about how do we ensure the um, continuous growth and expansion of the um, I, I like to call it the spiritual side. The question actually formulates it better, but I can't uh, I can't remember it right now. <laughs> um, uh, let me let me pull it up um, so that um, I can I can actually do this. Um, just this one second. Yeah, so number seven is how do we cultivate conditions for individuals to develop a strong and evolving sense of coherence within themselves? And this includes the capacity to make sense of the world, capacity to take action and purpose beyond the individual. All right, so that's what we do, right? That's number one. We answer these questions for ourselves and we can... We can also open discussions with other people, right? We can we can engage in shared sense making around this. But this will sharpen what you want to do in the world in order to get there, right? In order to start contributing to that world. And that's exactly the next step. Thinking about how do you want to define your role in this? There's, a, there's, a, there's an exercise um, called Ikigai. Um, there's, a, there's a popularized downstrip version of that concept, which comes from Japan, um, that works as four overlapping circles. So, um, and what it, and it asks four questions. What does the world need? Right, so that's the bridge from here now to there then to your vision. What does the world need? What am I good at? What can I do? Right, that's not so what, what can I get paid for? Right, that's, a, that's the third question. What can I get paid for? And the fourth question is, what do I love? That's also not necessarily what do I get paid for or what am I good at. Um, but if you bring all of these together, then you start developing something that is coherent between all four and then obviously also in alignment with the, with the overall vision of the world that you have. So now you have a better understanding of, of where to go what your role is, now you have to put it into your subconscious or into your system one. And there are two things you need to do to do this. You have to find a way to make the things that you want, the ways you want to act, the ways you want to be, the world you want to see, continuously present for yourself. There are several ways to do this. You can, the way I like doing this is writing it on my kitchen wall, right? So that every time I do the dishes or cook, I see these things. And after a year or two, and that's how long this, 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 this can take, they, they start becoming me, right? These things on the wall. I can put it on the background on my phone, for example. Um, or my computer, 
So I see it every time I look at my phone, I see this. I can create a mantra and uh, do a meditation in the morning around that mantra, right? things like that. But repetition is key. We have to maximize for repetition, um, uh, optimize for maximization of, of repetition somehow. Put it on the mirror in the bathroom, anywhere, right? Um, also, um, Diana pointed that out earlier, embodiment helps, right? So what I like doing as well is attaching in my mind, attaching these thoughts to a physical object that I wear, like a bracelet. Because that subconsciously reminds you of that, these ideas all day, every day. And so you can create your own prayer, like your own mantra. You do that in the morning um, with a bracelet in your hands, consciously charging that bracelet with your ideas and putting that on. Right? And again, super important. If I told you what to put on that, that bracelet, you should refuse it. Right? It has to come from you, not only you. Um, okay. And then you also have to make some space for that new content in your system one. How do you do that? According to um, several people, but um, I like using Gabo Mate for this, um, that we come to this world with two basic needs. One is the need for attachment. So we know who cares for us as, a, as an infant, as a baby. And the need for authentic expression, because we need to signal to that person or that, those people that we need to be cared for. Now, our expression, our, our, our modes of expression are limited in our first year or so. Um, so that, to, to, to just screaming, right? basically, we're crying. And that, that can mean a whole range of things. And it conflicts with the reality of life of those people that we have attachment to. And that's... And, and we're very, very fine-tuned to that. So the, the, the example Gabo Mati likes to tell is from his own first year of life, which happens to be in Budapest as the Nazis invaded. And he, for some reason, he was crying nonstop and his mother was worried. And so he called it, she called the doctor and the doctor said, well, yeah, I can come and look at your child, but really all Jewish children are crying right now. And what he's trying to say with that is how sensitive we are to the disposition of those close to us. Your stressed mother makes you cry. Right? So we we can we subdue our authentic expression or our, or our need for our authentic expression very very quickly because we're afraid of the circumstances or of the of the of the environment. We need to protect the need for attachment, and so that's a lot of muck in our system one that we want to get out right we want to make some space for some good stuff there right the good stuff that helps us be who we want to be and build the world we want to build now how do we do that we allow ourselves a space to be truly authentic for the first time since you were three years old and that space happens only between you and yourself so you take a piece of paper and you start writing. You start writing whatever comes up. And the, the more intense it makes you feel, either in a positive or in a, in a negative way, the better, and then follow that. That's an opening into your subconscious. Follow that feeling. And really dig deep, understand where that comes from. What's, what's driving this? 
and write it all down. Take half an hour, something like that. And once you've written it, you burn it. No one should ever see what you've written because it's just between you and you. What that does is it, for the first time, allows you to articulate things that are in your subconscious because you are allowed to engage in authentic expression without any limitations because nobody will ever interfere or know about this. And you do that for two weeks, maybe three, for however long you want, whenever you want. And I do this every time I notice that I have trouble sleeping because then I know something is nagging me. So as I, I, I just sit down, I, I, I start offloading and then, then I can immediately sleep, right? Um, and that creates space. And with the added repetition of the things you actually want there, that's when you start acting in the way you want because you're now closing the loop, the feedback loop between your system two that wants to be in the world in a specific way in a certain world and your system one that just acts, right? That just makes 90, 95% of your decisions every day. And now you start being fully aligned with what you want to do. Okay. So all of that could end up in a cult or a religion if, if I were to tell you what to do. I'm just giving the process and the content is fully yours. Okay. That's basically end of session. Thank you for this overload on a Thursday morning. <laughs> okay, that's... Um... Thank you so much uh, for sharing this, definitely. So um, uh, it's really a lot, you know, know. going through these seven questions. Um, mm -hmm. It takes be, time. Yeah. yeah, would be great if you're sharing uh, the, the link with us. Yeah, I will, I will. And then also, um, I mean, I'm, I'm familiar with the Ikigai. I don't know if you are, Catherine. I will, I will... Um, um, yeah. Okay, I will share. I will share a bunch of links um, for this session. Um, yeah. 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 Plus the video, yeah. so that um, uh, you can just repeat uh, at your own time. Yeah. And and there's no there's no expectation in 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 when or how you you do this, right? It's just um, super super helpful mm. um, for a person to do this in general. Um, and if, if, if you have the wish, we can also go deeper on this and have a, have additional discussions. Um, this is just a starting point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you too for the, for the insights. Indeed, the, it's a lot, but it's also enlightening. Uh, the links will help. We'll be, mm -hmm. we'll be having more discussions, I guess. So I'm looking forward for, you know, for more and more of this. Cool. It is very, it's very nice of you. Well, we're doing this together. So we're really grateful that you're here. Um, mm -hmm. And um, probably the intensity will stay like that. So tomorrow we're gonna to look at something completely different, but just as intense. Um, mm -hmm. And um, um, yeah, but we will record this so you can always just That's repeat true. in your own time. Yeah, and and discuss. So, so um, what, what, is, what is gonna follow in the next sessions? is um has more to do with the analysis of the predicament of the human species on this planet right now and then what follows as a consequence in at least sebastian's in my mind right and that does not have to be the same as yours i assume very much that it's the same as yours 
Um, and as I said, I've done this with hundreds of people and it, we always seem to agree that we want to do the same thing. I think mm -hmm. there's something inherently shared and similar about our human humanness that expresses in that. And so I have absolutely no doubt that we're on the same page. Um, this is more about creating the same language, cre creating some of the same understanding. And then mm -hmm. <clears throat> you will you will notice this when, when we have the ongoing conversations. Um, Diana expresses that in a different way than I do. And Sebastian expressed that in a yet different way than I do. And probably um, the, the hardest to listen to. Um, I'm probably the most abstract. Um, um, so I'm also super curious about the language you are going to develop for yourself around that. Um, mm -hmm. And there's, again, no expectation that you uh, repeat what any of us say. Um, the only hope that we have is that you really understand deeply what we intend, what we, how we see the world, and we hope that you resonate with that and agree with that. Right? That's. Um, uh, but if you have your own perspectives, um, then that's only natural because um, we all have our own perspectives. Mm -hmm. Yeah? That's okay. That is okay. <laughs> cool. Oh. Okay. So I need to run now. Um, uh, but we we have the um, we're meeting tomorrow. Um, um for the next sure. session. I, I, again, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about today. Tomorrow yeah. I'll be the earliest bud. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Uh, don't yeah. worry. Thank, but, but thank you for 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 making it so that we could do this. I think it's important. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Beautiful. All right. See you all tomorrow. Bye. Okay. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.